Okay, what I'd like to do here is to give just a very short demo of the Traceroute program. And what we're going to be doing is running Traceroute here on my computer in my house in Northampton, Massachusetts. And we'll be tracing the route of the routers uh, through the internet from my house here to a server, gaia.cs.umass.edu at the University of Massachusetts. Okay, so let's take the Traceroute program out for a test drive. Let's run it and see what actually happens when we run it, trying to trace a path from the laptop that I'm actually going to be running the Traceroute program on to a server, gaia.cs.umass.edu at the University of Massachusetts. Now you remember, hopefully, from the book that what the Traceroute program will do is actually print out the identity, uh, meaning the names and also the internet addresses on the router, of all of the routers, on the path from the host where I'm actually running the Traceroute program to the destination, which again, uh, in this case, is going to be the Gaia server. So let's run the Traceroute program. What you're seeing here on the screen is just actually a command prompt running on my laptop, so to run Traceroute. And I'm running Traceroute here on a, oops, uh, on a Mac, and you'd see something very similar under MS-DOS and also under Linux. So I'm running Traceroute, and the destination is Gaia, G-A-I-A, dot C-S, dot U-Mass, dot E-D-U. See what happens when we do that, okay? There's information about router that's only one hop away. Now the router that's two hops away is not providing any information, so we'll see a series of three stars. There's the second, and finally the third packet sent out doesn't return anything. And then in quick succession after that, we see reports coming back from routers three hops out, four hops out, five hops out, all the way to 14 and 15 hops out and 15 router hops away. Uh, I finally reach the server gaia.cs.umass.edu. Let's take a look at some of the interesting things that we can infer from this. So uh, if we actually go to router three, we see that the name associated with that router that's returned by the um, traceroute program is uh, a router that's at northampton.mass.boston.comcast, that's right here, .net, and so Comcast is my internet service provider, cable internet service provider. The router that's four hops out, five, six, and seven hops out also belong to the Comcast network. The router that's eight hops out, notice the name there, it's Knox slash Comcast, and finally it's actually in the Knox uh, organization itself. NOx.org is actually the name of a network, the Northern Crossroads Network, that is a research network in, um, in northern New England or in the New England area. So my packets have traveled from the Comcast network. They enter the Knox network at router 7, router 8, router 9, and router 10 are all in the Knox network. And then finally, uh, router 11, we see that that's got a UMass name, gateway.umass.edu. Router 12, router 13, and router 14 are also in the UMass network. Router 14 uh, is actually in cs.umass.edu. We see that there. And then finally, uh, 15 hops out, we see the Gaia uh, server, which was actually the target. That's the final destination where our packets are headed. So uh, using the Traceroute program, we see that we can determine the names, uh, in many cases, the names and the addresses of the routers between a source that's running the trace route and the destination. The other thing we can see is actually the, um, the round trip time from my host, which is sending the trace route packets uh, to each of these routers. So if I look at uh, the router one hop out, it's 1.4 milliseconds. The second probe was 4.7 milliseconds and the third probe was 2.1 milliseconds. So that's a, a very close by router. If I look somewhere in the middle, when I got to Knox, for instance, that was 12 milliseconds, 21 milliseconds, and 14 milliseconds out. And then finally, to get all the way to Gaia, 17 milliseconds, 16 milliseconds, and 17 milliseconds. And so this will give us some idea of both the propagation, queuing, um, and processing delays that go on in these routers end to end between my host and the Gaia server, the round trip time is on the order of 16, 17, 18 milliseconds, at least according to this instance of traceroute that we ran. Of course, if we run it again, we'll see some very different results coming back. So uh, that's it, just a very quick introduction to traceroute. Um, Keith and I would both very much encourage all of you to run your traceroute program or 
and or to go to the uh, website www.traceroute.org where you can actually run trace routes from remote locations actually to your host. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this short video clip and hope you get a chance to experiment around with trace route.